Welcome to a new BQN video. So, it's been a while, but I've been working on some BQN stuff. Namely, I've been looking into a way to structure games well, because the last videos I was struggling a bit with that, trying to find a good way to express a game and make it clean. I've got into a research thingy where I try to iterate and find neat ways to do it. And this is what I came up with. So, how to structure games in Ray BQN or a, an attempt to structure games in Raid BQN. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so first I have this simple example. I'm gonna show you what it does. This example just shows you a rectangle which bounces and then restarts. So let's go into the code and see what it looks like. The philosophy behind this was reactional functional programming. So I got this idea from a YouTube video from the maker of Elm and I'll show it here and in the description. The idea is that objects are represented by data. Uh, he called it signals, I think that's the idea. And signals are just some data which changes over time. And there are some functions which modify this data and then you can draw this data in a certain way. So I try to make it the same way. The thing is, BQN is not a functional language natively. So there are some things which are harder to do. There are also th some things which are nicer to do. Overall, I think this structure is quite verbose. I'm not sure if I fully like it, but I do think it's an interesting exercise to see what it would create and what this array-based language can teach me in making games because it's a way different language. I'm also quite new in the language, so this can probably be way better. But yeah, it's just good to share this idea, I think, and share it with people to have some discourse. Okay, so let's put me there. Here we have a collection of functions called in a namespace called block. And block is what I call the game object which bounces. Here are some functions, for example, fall and bounce which I see as giving it some characteristics. These take in the data from this object and then transforms it and gives it back in the exact same shape. Uh, that's the same as what I said with the functional language. You just modify the data and then give it back or make a copy, modify it and give it back. Uh, so you give this data some, this characteristic now. And I also give some parameters. So you can make it fall and bounce. Um, and then you have this draw function, which takes in this object and does a side effect, namely drawing the thing. And most of the things in the system happen in the on start. You define your structure and then the per frame is gonna go through the structure and call everything. First, we define our game objects. These are namespaces with some functions which are handy to use for the outside system. First, you want to get a way to draw it. It's also handy to have a get function. This get function returns you the initial values of the object. An apply function is needed to modify its data because in BQN, the only way to modify a, a field in namespace is through a function in its local scope, which can do that. This is the only function which does modification to be able to apply the data to the object so it can be drawn inside the system. But of course, this doesn't mean that it's not functional anymore because the data gets collected beforehand and only at the end, all the data gets applied. And then lastly, you have the data field, which is where the data of the subject is stored. So that is, for example, this one has a X, Y and velocity X, Y. And I get in the first frame, I get that information at the start. And here I show you that these are the essentials, but you don't need to draw it and you can just get your own thing. You don't really need all the outside functions if you want. Uh, and then you've got the states namespace. This is where all the messiness of the program goes. So the idea is that all the functions here are clean. They just take in some data and export some new data. Um, but things need to be interconnected. They need to sometimes listen to each other and you need to know the next state and that's quite messy. So I've tried to contain it all in this thing where you call the functions and do other transformations and then can get data from other objects before they are modified. Uh, I call them states because you can describe multiple of these and those are then states which you can go through. First you have updates. Uh, so it just gets, gives you the objects uh, and I deconstruct it here so I only get the player from it. And then uh, you give it back a new namespace. And this new namespace has fields corresponding to the fields 
or to the names of the game objects. Because what it's going to do is it's going to match on those names and then call the apply function with the new data later. So you need to give them the same name. And what you see here is you get first the player.data, so the data describing the player object, and then you make it go through these characteristics. So uh, you make it be able to fall with some parameters, you make it able to bounce with some parameters. And then the result, the modified data, you store in the player again. And then later that's going to be applied to the object. Uh, they've got the draw function. The draw function just wants you to give it back some objects which it can draw later. Quite easy. And they've got the new state. The new state also gets the objects. And then you do some logic. You can look into them. You can look for a certain situa situation. And that can determine what the next state will be. So here I just see if the three seconds have passed. If not, then I'm going to stay in play. If, if that is the case, then I'm going to reset the game. That's the reset timer. And then here, the reset state, it doesn't do much. All it does is the first frame is going to get the value. So it's resetting them, essentially. Uh, it doesn't draw anything and goes to the, the play state immediately afterwards. Then I'm going to the per frame function. I'm calling that. Uh, this is the previous, the last frame. It's just an empty namespace now because you don't have a last state and uh, the play state as the initial state. And then I give all the game objects. And all that I'm doing in the per frame is going through all these systems. So the first state I received, which is states of play, is gonna call update on that. So that's just this function. And it needs the objects as a parameter. And this will give us back this namespace with this name of the things that need to be modified and the new data it needs to have. Then it's just gonna go over all the all these objects. This files function is just getting all the keys and looping over them. And you can loop over a different object with different with other keys if you give it the left parameter. I loop over the game objects with the fresh objects. Then I have those and I'm just calling apply with the fresh object data. That's what I'm getting here in files. And then I'm calling state.draw, which gives me the objects I need to draw and then call and draw on those, uh, storing the last state and getting the new state from the new state function. Quite easy. So that's essentially the structure. It is quite verbose and you need to get it in your head, but I do think it gives a nice backbone and it's something to iterate on. So if other people have good ideas, I would love to see them. I would love to make this neater uh, because I think like, for mostly keeping the data in here and the data in here the same is quite hard. Like, these expect a certain structure and these give a certain structure and this also expects a certain structure and there is no typing. So you need to make sure yourself that it's the same. And also copying namespaces is quite messy, but that I'll show in this part of the video. So I have one other example just to show you what a, a bit bigger of a game looks like. This game looks like this. It's just a circle which grows and you can jump. Then on the left you have a timer and that's essentially your score. And you want to keep your ball within the bounds of your play field. So if you go out, it's game over and it's red. You can start again. Um, and also you can't press space immediately. It needs to wait for this text to pop up, which is timer, because otherwise you're gonna go back in the game again instantly. You don't want that. So that's the game. Um, as you can see, this is all the code and it can be, it is looking quite verbose. Uh, and especially because BQN is such a terse language, all the names fill up it, fill it up quite a lot and all the structures you're imposing here. So, but let's go through it. Uh, here are all these characteristics again. You can make it be red, just changing the color. You can make it grow, you can make it fall, you can make it jump. Uh, and this one doesn't actually return the same data structure, but it just returns another structure uh, for this, in this case, the collider. This is just to help the state structure with some functions. So you can also do that, of course. Uh, you got a timer text, which is just the text with a timer in it. And you've got a blend text, which is just the text. Um, and then here are all the game objects. Uh, first the player. And as you can see, the get function gets quite big because 
it has quite some data the player needs to know. And also I've done this where I have a constant namespace with values that don't change. The reason I did this is uh, when you recreate the whole thing, it's way easier to just copy this namespace because they're not changing anyways. Um, instead of listing out the, the numbers each time. And that's the annoying part. If you add a field to this thing, they need to add it in each case because the structure needs to stay the same in each case. Uh, I really tried to look into a way to make um, single namespace modifications, uh, which Haskell has, I think, in Elm, where you just say, I want this namespace to change and I get a copy with that the same thing but then a different the namespace being a different value but sadly that's not really a thing so i compromise with putting the constant things in a const namespace which i just copy over uh, the countdown is just a timer text with the values say for the player timer and the game over text is just the text draw a function from the text restart cooldown is just a timer a restart text is just the text so and I just getting the draw functions from there and then assuming their shape, assuming their shape. And then in the states again, um, in the start state for this thing, it's going to count down. So it's gonna make the player grow, which you can see at the start. It starts growing and then pops off, which I like. Uh, and then the counter is gonna tick the update. The, it's gonna draw the counter in the player and it's seeing if the counter is above its length then going to the next state, uh, otherwise staying in the previous state. Um, then in the play state, the player is going to be falling, growing and jumping. And this is quite nice. You can list them back to back. And this one is a parameter and then it gets all the, these characteristics. But this bit of logic is just to see if it's a fresh frame and then it's going to start its timer, the play timer. Uh, and otherwise it's going to stay the same and then it's going to take its frame. Um, it's going to draw these objects, get a collider, see if the ball is outside the screen. If that's the case, you're going to go to game over, otherwise you'll stay in play. And then game over, the ball will fall and be red, so it goes boom. And it's going to tick, and it's going to draw a bunch of stuff. And actually, I'm doing some logic here where when the um, cooldown is over, it's going to draw the restart text, otherwise it isn't. Uh, so you can put some logic in there, of course. New state is based on the cooldown being done and the uh, and the space being pressed. And their reset is just getting all the, the start values. And that's the whole thing. So it's quite readable, I think. Uh, only it looks quite verbose. Um, and you've got the thing of aligning the data structures. But yeah, I think that's it. Uh, this is the structure I came up with. It actually took quite a while to just iterate. And I'm also, of course, learning the language. Um, but I do love it to go through all the options and see what's possible and BQN is such an expressive language that, that it's very fun to play with these ideas seeing all the things which are possible for this idea i really try to stick with a vanilla vibe like sorry cameras here so i try to go a more difficult path where you create complicated functions which modify data structures and but i really wanted to keep it very vanilla because that is very easy to see the structures and understand them and see where things go wrong. And, and complicated stuff can go into these functions. Just so, so you have like a, a thin bare bones structure, which uh, makes the behavior understandable. Yeah, so interesting. I hope uh, this gave something and it's interesting to see. Uh, and yeah, that's just the video I wanted to make. So thank you.